someday or do you think doing something where you start to explore what it takes to do what I do for a living when you're a kid when you can mess up when you can, do, when you can have really bad podcasts I can tell you this not everything you do is going to be good but I promise you if you do it 20 times it's going to be better the 20th time than it was the first it's going to be better the 40th time than it was the 20th time you've got to practice and there's zero reason why a lot of you don't ever write. You don't write. You don't take the time to write. Write down your thoughts. Have a blog. Have a sports blog, which, by the way, creates a lot of the content. I write top of the hour, sort of short paragraphs for every single hour of my show. We start out the discussion. I welcome everybody back. And then I have a discussion point that I want to talk about. Setting up a thing, negotiating what we're going to do. My wife goes, is everything okay? And I said, we're going to work together. And she goes, really? And I said, yeah, I can't believe it either. Because, and we did for six years the big podcast with Shaq before I left Atlanta to come to Philadelphia. They've now turned the show over to a different to different folks. And Shaq's still highly entertaining, and I'll leave it at that. But I miss getting a chance to work with um, you. Were, were, like, like, were they okay with your <laughs> So much. I just love everything about it. I mean, I love sports, so I love talking about sports. I love all sports. I love soccer. I love every sport someone can compete in. I love competition more than I love sports. I just enjoy it. I mean, it's my passion, and when your passion can be your job, if you love the law and you're a lawyer, or if you love whatever it is you're doing, um, I can talk sports all day and all night. If I'm not talking sports on a radio show, Somebody on the street might be asking me a question, a family member, my wife. It's what I do anyway when I'm not working. When you do what anyway when you do when you're not working, then you know you love it. So I just love it just in every way. I just enjoy what I do. I enjoy the interviews. I enjoy going to games. I enjoy talking to the people I work with. I just never wanted to work in life, and I've gotten away with that. I never I really have to work. <laughs> about the character of this win because it was from all three phases. I mean, it was big. I mean, defense was playing great. Special teams made a play at a big time. And offense, we just had to get our groove. So just knowing that we was right there, knowing that we was always in the game, it just kept chipping away. How important was it with your turnovers that the offense had in the second half? The defense held them without points. They didn't get points the other way. I mean, it was great. Like um, Coach Sirianni said, when one side of the ball is so dominant, it helps the other side. So we knew that they was doing that for us, so we just had to help them out.
mean, they're trying to work all kinds of deals. They're trying to clear up tap room because there's, you know, Bradley Beal may be available. Uh, P.J. Tucker. Boo! And obviously I have interest in him because of what they did to him in the playoffs. Gerald Morey tried to get him last year the year before, but he wanted to go to Miami because Miami's Miami. You know, it's nice there. It's like games and dreams all year round. Um, but uh, I would say... I would say this thing with uh, Michael Rubin, the owner of the Fanatics, you know, the Fanatics is fascinating because he's basically saying, you know, I can no longer be a part owner of the Sixers because I'm getting into the gambling uh, aspect of my business. But also, uh, I was thinking this morning, like, okay, um, this could kind of be like a little NIL situation where he's no longer a part owner of the Sixers, but it's like, okay, he's very good friends with James Harden. That's one of the reasons why James wanted to come here, and Joel. What if he were to say to Bradley Beal, huh, well, if you come to Philadelphia, I will also sign into a $100 million player Plus. contract <coughs> merchandising and, uh, you know, all that stuff with my company, the Fanatics. So that could kind of almost be like a little NIL where you've got this guy, Michael Rubin, who has the best relationships in the NBA, uh, with owners, players, and everybody, you know, he's going to help out the Sixers any way he can as long as it's a good business deal for the Fanatics. I have a funny story about that. So we do draft previews, we do mock drafts, and as our Sixers host, I do mock drafts and I do preview. And so um, our website guys had emailed me a couple weeks before that draft two years ago and said, hey, you know, can you do some draft profiles? And so I profiled a couple guys that I don't think it's taken 21. And they said, all right, well, these look great. Um, we'll hit you up once and it's, it's going to run in the morning of the draft. So the night before, I completely forgot about it. The night before, the guy sends a message. I don't have my messages on or whatever. He sends it in Slack or something. I don't have Slack. Turned on notifications. So that morning, he's like, hey, just let me know what time you're going to send your final draft profile of who you think the six is going to take at 21. And I'm like, totally. Okay, all right, Amy. So I had to turn this thing out because I was like, I gotta write something. But it has to be someone that I know. There was no one in that draft that I watched more basketball from than Tyrese Maxey. I watched every game he played. I saw every mo moment he stepped on the court. So I said, I'm gonna write about Tyrese Maxey. Do I think he's there at 21? Absolutely not. He should be back in the lottery, maybe 17, 18, which I included in there. But if he's there, the Sixers should absolutely take him. He's a perfect compliment, combo card. Don't look at his three point shooting. He wasn't asked to do that. He's a better three point shooter than that. I looked like a genius that day because I was working under it. But I, that to me was awesome. It's a perfect fit for this. All right. Senate under pressure, spins away from trouble. Pointing downfield and has got to let it fly to the end zone. Did he catch that for a touchdown? Chris Myrick did. <laughs> what a play. What a play. They help him up. Well, what a play. So Hodge hits him from behind. and Again, nothing sinister or nothing dirty about that hit. Just Myrick up. One foot down. AJ Brown got brought in, so we have an off-season program called OTAs. And so during that time, he was there and kind of, you know, starting to learn the playbook and um, figure out all that stuff. But there always is a, a learning curve when you're in a new offense and having to learn, you know, all the details of what's going on. And I think AJ will definitely be um, up to speed. And it's different, too, when you're uh, – when you're a superstar, the coaches definitely make things a little bit easier on you. Everything's going to be set up for uh, for him. So, um, but I think we got a, a good group of wide receivers and a lot of guys that treat it like it's their, you know, like they're professionals, which I think is great. So, Smitty's the man. AJ Brown's really, really good. I think even you know four to eight on our receivers are, are all pretty good. So. I think that what we do in the run game is fantastic, and it's so beneficial to what is going to play in the Jalen Strong suits with how we can run the ball without without Jalen, how we can run the ball with Jalen, 
and then being able to have play action and some of those things off of it. Um, for me, as a quarterback, if I'm out there with that group, I'm saying, let's run the football, let's run hard, hard stuff, play action, and let me take you know the gimmies where I can get them. Um, and having an offensive line like that is amazing. It makes a huge difference. I don't, my Miami guy, we I was running for my life last year, <laughs> and it's dependent on who you have out there. And that's no disrespect to <coughs> some of my really good friends in Miami, but the, the Philadelphia offensive line is really good from Jason Kelsey all the way down to the guys that would be on the practice squad. Um, I think it's going to put us in a good position, and I think last year it took us a little bit to figure out that we can run the football and that we were really, really good at it every week. So it didn't matter how we passed the football. And then we faced a team like Tampa Bay, who was probably the worst matchup we could have gotten because their run defense is so good. Um, we just kind of ran into a tough spot. So I feel like we're, we're in a good spot as a team with you know, our run game as well as what we're doing in the, in the past stuff. Hey, Reed. Um, I'm Matthew. Um, who do you think is the toughest defender you've ever faced? The toughest defender? Um, I remember my first day in Tampa when we put pads on and watching Adami Kinsu and um, Shaq Barrett and those guys go full speed. I was like, okay, this is a little different than what I thought it was. Um, Fridays, you know, I was saying earlier, Fridays are red zone days, so you're throwing in the end zone a lot. Um, Stephen Howard loved to bait me, where he'd get me to throw the ball to, to his side of the field, and then he'd intercept it, and I'd be like, okay. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> we get it, you're that good. Um, but I think I think X probably would be that. Um, I mean, Slay is really good, too. Um, I think I, I'll, I'll stick with my answer of Xavier. Thanks. He's, he's legit. Tell you about quarterback play in general. I think there's not everybody wants the guy that is Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, you know, I think Andrew Luck, Kate Manning, some of those guys, and they're few and far between. You know, there's only a couple guys in like every generation that are that good. I think Jalen is a great player and I think he's gonna do a lot to help the team win. Um, if you're talking 10 or 15 years, that's kind of a crazy number to, to throw out there. Um, but I mean I have I have all the confidence in Jalen. That, that he's gonna help us win. And that's that's how I look at it is, can you help the team win, or are you, are you gonna be a hindrance to the team winning? And I think Jalen's in a position to help us win, and I think that makes a huge difference. Now, talking about Tom Brady, you know, there's only one Tom Brady. There's, there's nobody else that is like that. And I, I think the circumstances that he got put in with Bill Belichick and the Patriots, the injury to Drew Bledsoe and him getting a chance to play right away, some of those things I think are all dumb luck, and it happens. And I'm not saying that Tom's career is lucky or by any means, but there's things that have to play out that way. And I think Jalen's in a position to have success this year, and if he has success, then I can see the, the front office keeping him around. But it is a league where they're, everybody's trying to replace you every single year. You know, they brought it, we, we picked up Carson Strong, the kid from Nevada. There's always somebody that they're gonna try to bring in to, to replace, you know, and get better, because that's how sports work, you know? Brian Dawkins is still playing, even though he's, one of the best players ever, you know, it's, it's how it works. So, um, to answer your question, I think Jalen Hurts is the guy. I think he's a great player, he's a great leader. I think he's gonna put us in a position to win and I think that's all you can ask for. But I like the question. Seeing how it goes to you recently with side to the Nuggets, how does it feel to lose such a, a player that has been here taking feet in the Royal of program for over six years? I'll start with that. Um, Colin Gillespie was, was great. He was just a great player. one of the legends here. Um, he played the same position as Colin. I would just learn from how we went through the day-to-day -day business. And so I think what we lose most is the leadership that he brought and how he's able to show young guys like what I used to be, what it takes to become a great player. And now it's my turn to hand that off to Mark or Angelo or Guys. So I think his style of leadership is what's something that they really get passed down and something that every one of the guards should have uh, going forward. So, I agree with that. Just also off the first bell, I do end up in person. I uh, mean, it really was probably my house to transition, but just like a little bit of player, I think he did really, really good. Well. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.
each other, right? Uh, he is our for me. <laughs>